And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Wait a minute, how do you give life to a statue? You gotta give life, you give life to a statue, that's a robot. Power. What this robot or this beast, this image gonna do? Go ahead. That the image of the beast should both speak. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So this robot is speaking. Speaking, telling you what this man is saying or this beast to exercise the power of the first beast, which is Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to tell him what to do, and when you don't do what that robot say, boom, he's going to kill you. But I'll be the wilderness at this time. Go ahead. And he causes it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Oh, he got a mark too? Yes. But if you simple minded, you live by your belly, this is your mark right here. Go ahead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So you can't buy or sell? So you can't even pay for your license and do your license. You can't even pay your taxes on your house, even though you can pay for the house off. You can't even get your retirement money to go pay for your bills. Unless you have what? The, the mark. Man, you can't get around this. That's why God tells us not to be put our minds on this world and stuff so much. Get away from it. Read it again. 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Yes, sir. We know that. Go ahead. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. It's six, six, six. This is his number. And who hold that number today? Oh, the Pope, the Roman Catholic people. What is it? My kids filling out. And I'm the Roman. I know the Roman number. They come up with six, six, six. The man of sin is, sin is coming out of Rome. Believe that. He's going to be a Catholic. Now I say, this right here has been done before. Let's look at it. Yes, sir. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Daniel yeah. chapter 3. <clears throat> if you're a New Testament church, you don't even know what I'm talking about. They ain't, they ain't been done before. Yes, it have. Yes, it have. Yes, it have. Hey. The mark. Which one you going to take? Are oh, you taking the mark of Satan? All that money you got in the bank, you can't spend it. <laughs> I can't spend it. I can't pay my car, no. I can't pay my house, no. I can't do nothing. I can't buy no food. Nothing unless I got the mark in my right hand and my forehead. What good is he going to do? And then you take his mark, God going to deal with you. I'm going to show you that. You going to want to die. You can't even die. Let's look at that from the past where he said he exercised the power of the first beast. Daniel chapter 3, we'll start with verse 1. Go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Three score cu cubits and six cubits? What is that? That's six, 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 ain't it? He made an image. But his image could walk and talk, like the image going to happen. In Revelation, we just read about in Revelation chapter uh, 13. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. He said, man, come up here now. I want everybody to see this. This is about me. You're going to worship me, Nebuchadnezzar. This is the image of him. Go ahead. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Go ahead. Then the herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, 
the sackbut, the sultry, sultry, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Now he tells them, everybody come and see this, because I'm going to say this one time and one time on. When you hear these instruments playing, you better be worshiping down at this image. And these instruments, if you got the count of these instruments, the coin, harp, sackbut, sultry, all of them are six. Six. Why they chose the, the number six? Because he he understands, Satan understands, he got to do it exactly like it happened in the old days so he can go through. He know us. He know how we do it. We live by our business. Mm -hmm. We hungry. He know how we do it. Mm -hmm. We scared of, we scared of dying. Man. That's why he's going to make sure this happens. This is why he's going to make sure this happens. Go ahead. Verse 6. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fire furnace. If you don't worship in Revelation chapter 13, what happened? You will kill. Same thing. Go ahead. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the corner, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So all of them fell down and worshipped. What, what happened? Well, but it got a few of us still on it, still out there. Go ahead. Well, for at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Mm -hmm. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the corner, the flute, the harp, sackbut, saucer, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. See, those things right there have significance. Those number of instruments, how tall the statue is, all of them is six, six, six. He wants to make sure we remember this. That's the same number. He said they got to fall down and worship. It. What else? Go ahead. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. This is what happens. You get killed. Go ahead. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. See, the Israelites, we know we can't serve this God. They're like, no, nah, man, we ain't doing that. We're dying. Right. This is the same mentality that we got to have because some of us going to get caught over here and not in the wilderness. You better die now. Just like these brothers, Shadrach, the Meshach, and the Bidigo did. They said, look, man, we'll die before we, take, before we bow down and worship your image. Because they know what God got prepared for the sinners is way worse than dying in his flesh. Way worse. Go ahead. 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Yes, sir. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve any gods, my gods, nor worship the image? The golden image which I have set up? He asked him a question now. Why you didn't buy down the world? Did you not do this? Why you didn't do this? Go ahead. Now if you be ready that at the time you hear the sound of the corn, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Well, you talking big, ain't it? Yes, sir. Real big. Who is that, who is that God? This the God of Israel, man. You don't know what you're dealing with. Oh, Go ahead, bro. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. Check out what they said. Go ahead. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. He said, man, we ain't got to answer to you. We serve the God of Israel. Do what you want to do. He's going to deliver us. Come on, baby. This is the mindset that some of us are going to have to have once you get caught over here. And there's going to be a bunch of them get caught. Go ahead. 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire of furnace. Yes, sir. And he will deliver us out of the hand, O king. He said, look, he'll deliver us. We worry about that. Do what you will. Go ahead. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we would not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. He said, man, we ain't gonna serve your God. We know who the God of Israel is. Go ahead. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fervor. Right. Right. Man, like, what? 
I'm a threat to throw these guys in the fire in front of me. They talking to me like this? I'm the king. He was furious. Go ahead. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hold on, that let you know, that these were white. <laughs> the form was his visage, meaning his skin changed, he red. <laughs> so I just want to point that out. Go ahead. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was one to be heated. Yeah. Seven times. Seven times. Go ahead. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. So he called the mighty men to cast them in. I'm going to tell you what, this, this furnace is hot. We're going to see what happened to the mighty men. Go ahead. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hose, and in their hats, and their other garments. And were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace had seen it hot, the flame of the fire slew these men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It killed the men trying to throw them in there. It killed the men. It didn't kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's see what happened inside the furnace. I just about to read all this right here. It was good to me. Go ahead. <laughs> and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. This is being my faith. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Yeah, he said, Man, we cast three men in there, but something happened. Go ahead. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Ooh, Nebuchadnezzar's eye was open. Glory he saw God. the angel coming, uh, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. They didn't have no even stench of smoke on them. The clothes didn't get burned up, nothing. But it's what you want to roll with. You want this mark. Go ahead. 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came into the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ye servants of who? The Most High God. The Most High God. Oh, oh man, you believe. Oh, <laughs> he showed you that vibe. I'm just telling you, once they see that vibe, they're like, okay, we got the armor down. Right. We got the armor down. We threw three men in there, we see a fourth one. Who is that? Like the Son of Man? The angel protected them. Right. That's why you got to understand this when you roll with God. But some of us get so scared when the situation rises up against us, and then we panic and lose faith in God and walk in. Them boy had faith. Well, my boy, me have had faith. And God showed him up with that angel. Go ahead. Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of, of the midst of the fire. Let's see what his mentality is. Go ahead. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was in hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. How is that? Ooh. How is that? You in the fire from the kill the king's mighty man. You come out, you ain't got no smoke on you. Your head ain't even burnt. None of that. Man, that's God, man. Amen. He take care of his people. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Oh, now we got to change the heart. He's seen God power. Go ahead. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dung hill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. Oh, this is what we're talking about. This is the power. But I just want to show you that this happened. And believe me, in the Great Tribulation, some people are going to live through. God going to protect someone, but they're going to be running for their life, though. They're going to be running from Revelation chapter 7, 7 tell you that the end of the tribulation, they came out. Some of them are going to come out. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, before anybody think about taking Satan Mark because they belly is hungry, because they feel a little pain, you better die. 
you will die. Because what God got planned for you way worse than you dying in this fleshly body. Stop trying to save yourself. Stop trying to save yourself. That's what most people problem is. They scared to die for the truth. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to start with verse 24. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you understand that this flesh and body is just like a little calm in the sense. Believe me. When you wake up, when I wake up, it's eternity time. Whether you're going to be in the kingdom or whether you're going to be in the lake of fire. Verse uh, 24. Let me show y'all. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. When he's he talking about cross, he's talking about the pain of bearing his gospel sometimes. When you tell the truth to people, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. They're going to separate themselves from you. They're going to do all things to you, but you got to take it up. You got to ride with it. I got to ride with it. Go ahead. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You see what he's saying there? Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So you trying to save your life and eat some food? Because you can't buy a sale unless you have Satan Mark? No, nah, you're going to lose your life. What next verse he said? Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. If you die by taking the mark, you're going to find eternal life. Don't get it so, don't get it twisted. We only promise 70, 80 years upon this earth, maybe 90, maybe 100. But it's eternity after that. Don't take this mark, because you're going to lose eternally if you do. Go ahead. 26. For what is a man profited if he, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? See what he said? What you going to profit? If you gain all the money, the cars, the clothes, all this stuff, the hoes, everything, what are they going to profit you? Nothing, you're going to die. And now you got to deal with the man who created the son. Mm. And believe me, God is a man that he should not lie. He's not like a man that he should lie. Go ahead. Or oh, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? A lot of people won't give up. All this material is stuff, food and water. They take their mark. But don't take it, die. Go ahead. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. This is what we got to do. we got to work. Press toward the mark. You're going to understand when we read that what this really means. God's mark. Go ahead. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of them till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Because some people are going to live to the end. And they're going to go up. Like what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says. Call up, you're going to see the ones in the grave coming out. And then you're going to go up. Let's go to Revelation chapter 9. Just want to show you. Don't take Satan, Mark. Get on your job and understand these commandments. Get them in your mind. Get up with them. Go to bed with them. Walk around with them. Every situation that you did with life, put God's laws in it. See if you're doing right. Revelation chapter 9. In verse 1, because you got a lot of small ones out here. I just, I just take the mark and then I see it and serve God. <laughs> okay. We're going we're gonna to get you ready. We're going to check you ready. See, can you really do that? <laughs> Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And we know that film, this, uh, the star is Satan. Follow it. It's going to be a time to come up. He put all the players of his uh, people to work. Because the great tribulation might have started. Go ahead. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. Yes, sir. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Notice something. I was paying some I paying Bill Gates some t attention. He said he trying to create something to cover the sun. You know what I'm saying? And I'm reading this, I'm like, hold up. The sun gonna be dark and the moon not gonna give a light. I'm thinking that this cat gotta play into this. But, you know, I'm just really studying that. This cat right here trying to make sure he gets objects out there in the sky where he can stop so the sun from coming to the earth. 
right? You know who that affects, right? Us. Us. Because our skin is powered by the sun. Their skin is not powered by the sun. They have to wear sunblock. Uh, just something I'm on part of you know, right? we'll, get, we'll get back to that. Go ahead. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now understand this. These are not talking about animals. These are military weapons. This is the only, this is the only thing John could compare what he was seeing at the time. He don't know no helicopter, no jet, no tank. He compared it to two animals. This future right there. When his son and all this stuff done, he come the military. He going to wreak havoc upon the earth. That three and a half year tribulation. This was going down right now. Go ahead. Verse 4. And it was commanding them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. You see what it says there? The ones that don't have the seal of God in their foreheads, he's going to hurt you. If you don't have a seal of God, who, what seal do you have? Seal the seal of Satan. Let me show you the team. Go ahead. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. He said, they're going, this is germ warfare, chemical. The ones that got the mark, they're going to spray some chemical warfare. They're going to hurt you for about five months. You're going to want to die, but you can't die. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Because you ain't even going to have power over the function, fun your, your functions of your body. You can be laying there, foaming at the mouth. Can't do nothing. You go to sleep, you wake up, you're still in the same pain. All because you took this mark of Satan. This is sealed. Go ahead. Keep and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Mm -hmm. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. All it's telling you is that these helicopters, these military weapons, look, they are going to have people here controlling them. That's all they're saying. This is military warfare. I ain't want to read all that. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. We have to understand. How God thinks, not how man thinks. And believe me, if like you're trying to save your life and somebody else's life, you can't do it. Even if you desire to save, save your mama because she's old, or your daddy because he's old, your child because she's young or he's young, if God wants them, they're gone. And I'm going to show you that. You better be worried about saving your own soul. The only thing you and I can do is tell our family members. That's it. Amen. When it's time to roll, let's go. Amen. Gotta go. They'll catch up. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how urgent it is. We can't save nobody but ourselves. If God wants you, He's gonna get you. Your children, much, much as you want to save your children, you can't do it. I can't do it. Ezekiel 14, verse 12. Let me show you that. Go ahead. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. This is what God tells you his power, how it stretches out over the land. What he made. This is what he do. He going to tell you who you can save and who you can't save. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, said the Lord God. Deliver who? Their own souls. Go by ahead. Their by the righteousness of God. God. That's the seal. Go ahead. If I cause no some beasts to pass through the land, and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, said the Lord God, they should deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. See what I told you? God got you. You can't, you, you can't deliver nobody else but you. But if God wants them, he going to get them. So stop focusing your time on your family member. You better focus your time on yourself. And a lot of, if you want to tell them, just tell them. Bring them to class. You did your job. You planted that seed. It's up to them to get it. 
your children, your family member, anybody that you love. It's the best thing you can do to them. Tell them to tune in to one of these camps, seven class. Go ahead. 17. Or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through that land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. You keep telling us this. They ain't going to send it through this land, through great tribulation, and he's sending it now. You can see animals picking up people and eating them. Go ahead. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut out from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. We they just, go ahead. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Just think about what we just went through COVID-19. You saw a lot of family members lose their family members. You saw a lot of them lose them. And they wanted to be praying and praying. Lord, please, they fasting. God still killed them. He still killed them. You better be worried about yourself. And so people say, I can't serve a God that killed my mama, my dad, and my brother, sister. That would make me serve me more. Because oh, I, I couldn't even pray for you to come out your situation. Right. Believe me, save yourself. Don't put so much emphasis on your family. Go ahead. 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Go ahead. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you and you shall see their way and their doings. And you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. Who brought this? The Lord. The Lord. He said, I brought this. You want to get mad with somebody? Okay, you get mad with me. I brought this pestle. He brought COVID. He brought cancer. He brought it all. You know why? Because he controls life and death. If he didn't want it to happen, it wouldn't happen. Go ahead. 23. And they shall comfort you when you see their ways and their doings. And you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, said the Lord. He said, I have not done without cause. What is that cause? Sin. That's the reason why he's done most of this stuff. This is what the book says. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 13. Let me show you why. I'm telling you, don't focus on blood. Now, I ain't telling nobody that all your family gonna be like this. If they follow the word of God, we all gonna be there together. We all gonna be there together. It's gonna be a great family reunion when we in the wilderness together. They're like, I'm checking to see my kids. I'm checking to see y'all. I'm checking to see the family members. I'm checking. And I want y'all to check for me too. But I gotta make sure I put this on the table so you won't get caught up with feelings and emotions for blood. You better be getting to the wilderness. Mark chapter 13. We're going to start with verse 10. Let me show you something here. Go ahead. And the gospel must first be pre must sorry. Mm -hmm. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. And he's publishing it through us. That's what he's saying. We're teaching the word of God. We got it on all these social media sites trying to get it out here. We talking about the mark, the mark of God, and the mark of Satan. Which one do you want? You better want the mark of God. Go ahead. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate. Pre pre uh -huh. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Because they're going to deliver you up before all these people. At this time. Because if you're not willing, they're going to say, hey, Jeff on that Bible shop keeping that Saturday. You told us to worship on Sunday. Hey, they out there trying to keep the Passover. You told us to keep Easter. Hey, they're going to deliver you up. And guess who's going to be? Your family. Go ahead. Now the brother shall be betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. What did that just say there? Mm. 
Now brother shall betray brother to death. And father, the son, the children shall rise up against the parents.